We're about to take an early look at Chronicles of Crime 1400, the first game in the new Millennium series of app-driven murder mystery, invest uh, mystery investigation games. Before we continue, we do need to take a moment to thank Lucky Duck Games for sending us an early review copy of Chronicles of Crime 1400. All right, Chronicles of Crime 1400 was designed by David Kersiel, Wojciech Grykowski, and it features some amazingly evocative artwork from Barbara Gobieska, Mateusz Komada, Katrina Kosobuka, and Mateusz Michalski. I apologize if I got any of those wrong, I tried. This is the first game in the new Millennium series of games that are standalone games set in different time periods using the system that was first introduced in Chronicles of Crime. This series was funded in Kickstarter, the Millennium series, in March just this year, 2020, where it funded on day one. Retail version will be published by Lucky Duck James and should be out by the end of the year. This is a standalone Coded Chronicles game that plays one to four players, though I could say one or more, to be honest. The more brains, the better in a way, with each investigation taking under two hours approximately. Now, the base game box includes five crimes to be solved, one of which is a shorter tutorial investigation. Now, each scenario is only meant to be played once. These are mysteries. These are generally murder mysteries, but there are some other, other, other crimes to be solved. And once you solve the crime, you know the solution. But unlike many of the other puzzle games we've reviewed here at Tabletop Bellhop, such as the Exit series of games, nothing is destroyed while playing. So your game remains playable after the fact. So you can then pass it on to someone else, sell it on the secondary market, or return to it once you've completely forgotten what happened in that first case. Well, for a look at what you get in the box, watch for our unboxing video, which will be live on YouTube November 2nd. Or for a complete listing, check out the full rev written review on the blog. Now, to keep things brief, I will just summarize here because I don't want to get into all the details, all the components. Most of what you get here are cards, cards of various sizes from big to small and a board, central board to put most of those cards on. There's location cards, people cards and item cards. All of this is stored in one of the nicest plastic box inserts that even comes with a lid, which means this card based game, you can actually store vertically on your shelves without having to worry about anything falling out or getting misplaced. Fans of uh, protecting their games with sleeves will be happy to note the insert appears to be, I didn't test it, designed to fit sleeve versions of the card because all of the spots are a little larger than the cards that are in them. More and more manufacturers are stepping up with the inserts, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Now, the first thing you need to do to play any of the Coded Chronicle games, including this one, is you need to get the Coded Chronicles app. Once you have the app, which is 100% free, you're going to pick the Chronicles of Crime 1400 entry and then slick select one of the crimes you wish to solve. When this game is released, there will be five crimes available, one including a tutorial and four full investigations. And it is expected, at least based on what Lucky Duck's done with the other Chronicles Crime games, that there will be further crimes released through the app as downloadable content. So despite the contents of the box, this is very much a digital game mm. requiring a mobile device and an app, as well as content updates and provide and content provided by the publisher ongoing. Just one correction. You don't actually need a mobile device. You can actually get it on Windows and um, Apple as well. You can just play it on a PC. Uh, but it requires camera, correct? Uh, yeah, it must in some way. Right. So I, I know you can get it for Windows and Apple. <laughs> I obviously didn't try it. But yeah, it would require some form of camera somehow. Right. Yeah, you do have to be able to, to scan QR codes. So in Chronicles of Crime 1400, you are playing Abelard Laval, a knight sworn to King Charles the Sixth, the Beloved, who lives in the city of Paris, or Paris, however you want to go. Since you were a child, you've had prophetic dreams in which you see scenes of crimes being committed, or even ones yet to be committed. You learned to use the skill to solve cases no one else could and quickly earned a reputation as the person to go to when there is a mystery that needs to be solved that no one else can. So a late Middle Ages psychic detective under a king suffering from significant ongoing mental illness. While yeah, you called him, called him Kim Charles the Beloved, he was in the second half of his career known as King Charles the Mad. <laughs> I'm just going with what's on the box. Similar to Watergate, I'm not actually aware of the Paris scandal of 1400. 
So each crime in Chronicles of Crime 1400 starts with you waking up to one or more visions. These are represented by large vision cards that only have artwork on them. These are images that are going to hopefully help you in your investigation. After looking over these clues, the app will tell you where you are, what you know so far, and instruct you to put out various cards for locations, people, and items. People you know about are placed on the main board, whereas people you know not just about, but where they are, are placed at specific locations. Similarly, items you have in your position are placed on one part of the main board, while items you only know about the existence of are placed on another. So an interesting use of the zones there, as we discussed in a previous episode, one might expect the player or players to take and hold the objects they had in their possession rather than merely using just another portion of that board in front of you. Well, for one, I think this is due to the fact you're expected to be playing uh, with more than one person. Yes, you can play it one one person, but they expect it to play up to four. So you kind of want all the clues everywhere because everyone is playing the one character. It's not like you're each different investigators. It's a cooperative game. You're all controlling um, Abelard or, sorry, I forgot his name. <laughs> Something Laval. I remember the last name was Laval. Yeah, Abelard. Abelard Laval. You're all controlling Abelard Laval together. So I think one of it is you want everything in the center of the table. So in whatever zone three or four, whichever that is, so that everyone can see it and everyone can interact with it. Plus, actually, using the app takes two hands. You actually have to hold it over things and then also tap it. Like, you have to hold down a button to scan. Well, I guess if you're really dexterous, you can do it one <laughs> hand. For me, it took two hands. So there's no way, like, one person could hold all the cards and still also scan stuff and look around the room, which we'll get to later. Interesting. All right, well, so a pool of resources to work with, you know, makes yeah. a little more sense there. Now, solving the crime involves traveling to various locations and interviewing people at those locations. When interviewing people, you can ask them about other people and or items. Doing this will unlock more people, more items, and more locations. Each time you talk to someone about anything, five minutes of in-game time passes. And every time you travel, 20 minutes goes by. Now, sometimes things in the game, and I was blown away by this, will actually change based on time passing. For example, someone who is at a house at one point might now be out on the at, at an inn later. Or what people know may change if you interview them again or... Have, they may have new things to say or you might be able to interview them with new items because time has progressed during the investigation so interesting and a very video game like mechanic with the time advancement and such mm -hmm. uh which is not surprising given these app driven aspects and the focus on the you know the app as that mm -hmm. control in the game yeah, what I liked about that is like all the previous exit games I've played have been static. It solved the puzzle and the puzzle stays the same no matter what. It was cool to see it adapt and change as you played. Now, all of this, we mentioned the app many times, is handled through this app, right? The Chronicles of Crime app is, is the, the, the killer app. It's, it's what you're doing to do all this. So to travel to a location, you scan the location's QR code. Once there, if you want to initiate an interview with a person, you scan that person. And then once you're talking to the person by scanning them, you then scan what you want to talk to them about. So you're going to ask them about different items or people by scanning the QR codes on those items and people. After each scan, you're going to read what the app says, and often it'll instruct you to pull out new cards or tell you where to, and tell you where to put them so like okay you've heard about this person he lives here so put out the location for here and then put his card there or sometimes it'll be like oh there was a, a mugger in the in the the tavern but he ran out the door and we don't know where he went you put him in a different spot so the cards uh, or the qr codes are essentially similar to clicking on a location or a person Mm -hmm. um, in, a, in a list as you get in a digital mystery game. So, you know, instead, instead of you can interview X, Y, Z, B, you, it's interview the one of the five cards in front of you. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Well, now what you do here is you don't get multiple choice questions. So you don't like go talk to someone and you get five options. Instead, you have everything in front of you you could scan to talk to them about. So it's, right. it's not quite like a which way interface you'd expect from some video games. Right. Now, in addition to this, you can also scan a crime scene. You can look around a crime scene. Now, this uses VR for this part of the game. One player is going to take the device you're using, either the app or, or the computer. And now with the computer, what you do is you point and click. With a phone, you can actually play either in 3D, if you actually have the proper glasses for it, Google Cardboard, or you can actually, Chronicles of Crime has an expansion that comes with a little attachment for your phone and a bonus mission. Or partial 3D, where you, you just use the, uh, the gyroscope in your device to be able to look around. Or you can play in 2D, where you just swipe or click. 
to look around the room. So you get all those options. While one player is looking around the crime scene, they're going to call out what they see. So it's going to be like, hey, I see a window. Oh, I see. Oh, wait, there's a crossbow in the corner. Oh, there's some blood and guts over here. And you're going to say what you say. The other characters, the other people playing, sorry, the other people playing are then going to be looking through the pile of item cards and pulling out anything you mentioned. Now, these clue cards are going to be vague, so you're not going to see crossbow, you're going to find ranged weapon, and you're not going to find cross or candles or Bible, you're going to find devotional objects. And this is done for one, so that they can be reused in all kinds of different crimes. Makes sense. And I think this is a really nice touch. And this is something that gives this whole app driven aspect some real value, in my opinion, mm. the ability to use that Google Cardboard, you know, VR experience to really experience those surroundings is a fantastic touch, uh, making you sort of work for the clues, right? You mm -hmm. need to you need to use your eyes and, and experience the crime scene yep. in order to be able to succeed. And that's that's something you can't really get without, you know, that it's, it's, it's different than hold mm -hmm. up this card, you look at it for 30 seconds and remember what's on yeah. it. No, exactly. And that, that is probably the neatest part about the game. And what's uh, I think worth noting that I did, didn't have written down here is this is not um, photorealistic. You were looking at a, a painted artwork. So it's not like it's overly gory. Yes, right. there could be some blood and guts or whatever, but it's not it's nothing disturbing. You're not looking at a, at a 3D crime scene that's going to turn anyone's stomach. Right. They, this isn't but, photo real. Yes. Gore. So the game basically continues like this, right? You're going to move about, talk to people, unlock clues until you think you've solved the crime. Now, no, you have to make this call. The game is not going to tell you you've got everything. It's time to solve it. You decide when it's ready. When you do that, you're going to do something in the app that says, I'm ready to solve the clue, the, the crime, and it's going to start asking you a bunch of questions. And then to answer these questions, you're going to scan things. So it's going to be like, who killed X? And in reply, you'd scan the card for the killer. And then you could be asked, yeah, where is Y hidden? And you'd scan the location that Y is hidden. I don't really don't want to spoil anything here, obviously. Plus, it's going to be different depending on which case you're done. Once you're done answering your answers and you're given a final score, you'll have like a rating X out of X. Like our first one, we did got 110 out of 110. After seeing your score, you then have the option of reading through the full solution to see if there's anything you missed. So you scan Colonel Mustard, then you scan the kitchen, and you scan the pipe wrench, yep. and it tells you how accurate your score was. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, before I get to my final thoughts on Chronicle Crime 1400, I do need to point out, I have not played the original. The original's popular, it's out there, There's, I think it won a bunch of awards, it looks kind of neat, but to be honest, it just didn't interest me. You're in... Um, you're in the UK, you're in London, you're playing a Bobby and you don't have the prescience. I don't know. Medieval just seemed way cooler to me. And I'm just not much for modern gaming. Whereas once you threw this medieval veneer on here, I was like, oh, I'm all for it. I don't know why, but that's me. So this was my first experience with this franchise and it's a unique app based gameplay. I got to admit, I kind of want to go try the original already. Yeah, no, and it's, uh, you know, the original is a solid 7.8, and this, so, it, you know, this is certainly a strong recommendation, even before we get to the details of the yeah. game, that, hey, I've played this game, and before we get to our review, I want to go and play the other games in this series. No, seriously, like, <laughs> I really want to check it out, because one of the things they did that's so brilliant is by having the generic things, you could tell so many different stories with it. So starting from the beginning, opening the box, I was impressed. The production quality here is, is top notch. The Chronicle Drive 1400 looks great. The rules are excellent. They were great for teaching the game. Lots of examples, not too long. It was only like seven pages. So it's one of those, I wouldn't feel bad cracking the shrink on this and reading it to the other three players in front of me before playing the first time. The box inserts I love. Like I seeing a card purse based game that I can store vertically is awesome. Not that I store my games vertically, but I know many people do. So that's a that's a great one. That is one of the best I've seen. And the art here is bang on. Like it it's very evocative. It's well drawn. It I love the art. And it's as good as anything I've seen in any other game. Like this this is one that, that could be up there for like when people have game of the year for artwork of the year, this should be a nominee if it's not, well, it's not out yet, but I'm, <laughs> I'm guessing in 2020, this might hit a, a artwork nominee for this year. Interesting. Now, as for the app based investigation system, which is the heart of this, I think it's brilliant. Like it's just such a unique and engaging way to create a mystery. It's not flipping through the book and reading the passages. Like you actually get this feel of having to talk to the right person about the right thing and note what they're saying and how they say it. And it's all about like the lies and the subtle clues and presenting the right evidence at the right time. Like knowing that the guy is kind of hinting at this and you're like, Oh, but here is the 
thing and they're like oh you caught me and they finally give in right you get all that feel of of, of a true investigation overall though this does read leads to a rather immersive experience except for one thing I'm using an app and it's supposed to be 1400 France. And that just, there's something incongruous about that, right? Like it just feels off. Plus there's all the common issues that come up with trying to scan anything. Like sometimes you don't get the angle right and the lighting's not good and you got to pick the card up. And sometimes you're not careful. You're holding a card in your hand and you scan the one behind it and you lose 20 minutes because you just traveled. You didn't want to travel and there's no one do. All of that firmly takes you out of the moment of trying to solve a crime. Right. So here's where I need to ask the question. Uh, and I don't know if any of our listeners have, but this one came to me while I was sort of going through the original review on this is why is this a board game? While it's wonderful that they've gone into so much effort and, and put such fantastic art into it uh, and, and gone to all these components and the presentation, why is any of the physical material acquired? What does it bring to the game that couldn't have just been handled in an app where instead of scanning the, the kitchen, you click the button that says kitchen. Mm -hmm. Fair, very fair question. So I'm going to start off like going back to when we were talking about the zones of play, right? So one of the things that if you've ever played like, um, oh, I'm trying to telltale games, that's what these remind me of, right? Point and click style adventures, any of the telltale games, those are single player experiences. Those are something you sit with your app and you play through your, your tablet, your phone. Whereas this is meant to be a multiplayer experience. And that is something you're not going to be able to recreate with an app. And yes, I guess you pass the phone and you click the next two things and you click the next two things, right? You're not all going to be able to work on it at the same time. Now, one person's going to be doing the scanning, but everyone else can interact with the stuff, right? They're going to be able to pick up things and they can look at the vision cards. And then you're going to have a discussion with each other on what to do, right? Like, who should I talk to next? Or did you remember this fact? Or do you remember that's her husband? Oh, wait, I bet you the ring means they're cheating on each other or whatever. And that physicality is the next part of it, which is the fact that everything's laid out in front of you. Like you have all of the clues and all the locations and all of the people involved in front of you that you know at one time. So it's like, it's, it's almost like your game table becomes a cork board, right? Or a murder board with, there's no strings, but you've got everything kind of tied together. And I personally don't see how you could recreate that information in a usable way on an app. Like that just seems like one of the, like I'd zoom in, zoom out. I don't know. Plus you can manipulate it. So I can move this here, or put this there. Or when someone moves from this, when I know that someone's been murdered, I can then move them. And I know they're burying the body. I move the card to the, the, the graveyard location. And like, there's a physicality there that's, that would be missing from an app. And I think that is a good part of it. Two is you're touching things, the, the, the tactile thing. Now, maybe this is with me. We've talked about this before, how I cannot play the Onitama app or the Hive app, but you play me in the real game and I'm, I'm a killer at it. Just something about touching and moving things just, just has more permanence to me and it sticks in my head better. Just even things like while the player is looking around the room, the other player is shuffling through the clue cards, looking for the right object or being able to like pick up the person who's investigating and physically moving cards and stuff like that. All of that, I don't think you'd get with just a digital experience. All right. Well, I, I think honestly, uh, that, that kind of does sell me on, tell me, sell me, sell me on the differences. Um, the, the, the physical manipulation of the objects yeah. is definitely something that I can't think of a game that's managed to reproduce, uh, but doubling down the group is aspect. Now, yeah. I mean, the group aspect I think is still a little odd because you are all playing one person. Yeah. So, um, you know, not only is the King having psych psychotic episodes, <laughs> you've got four voices in your head. Yeah. Uh, Abelard Laval has got four voices in his head. Yes. But, uh, let's hear your final thoughts then. All right. Overall, I think you can probably tell just even by my manner of speaking here, I was really impressed by Chronicles of Crime 1400, both uh, the physical components and more importantly, the actual gameplay. This was a totally unique crime investigation experience for me. I, and my family, right? Like we played four of us with my extended family. And we all greatly enjoyed all our plays of the game so far. Like I, the, the system's just brilliant. Like I can't wait to play the rest of them in the box. And I'll admit, I haven't played them all. And to be honest, they haven't all even been written yet because <laughs> this was a Kickstarter that's not out yet. I can't even play all of them, but we haven't done them all, but I am looking forward to playing them and then checking out the other games in the Millennium series. Like one of them is going to be sci-fi. I don't, I don't have it in front of me. Like there's 1400 and I think there's 1900 or something like that. And then there's like 23 something. So that just looks really cool. And even though 
I, I modern. I don't know what it is. I, I, I live in modern times, so I don't want to play in that time period normally, I guess. Isn't my thing. I am curious to check out Chronicles of Crime now. I honestly think if you dig, you know, CSI, crime investigation, that genre of, that genre overall, you need to check out this series of games. Whether it's 1400, the original series, I don't think anyone who's a fan of mysteries and murder mysteries and any of that style of gameplay is going to be disappointed with the system. Even if you don't generally think those are the kind of games you enjoy, that was me. So you might want to check this out. Like the only thing that got me to try this is I'm like, ah, medieval knight with prescience. That sounds kind of neat. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't ever tried this. And man, I would have messed out. This is the most fun I personally had with any of these style of games. All right. Well, for a much more in-depth look at Chronicles of Crime 1400, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on reviews.